Hello! It's time for another art haul! Probably my last one for quite a while, for the logistical reason that my studio is getting very full and I have a lot of art supplies that I need to try and work my way through. But I thought I would go out with one last haul, <laughs> just to show you the items that I have picked up in the last few months, and then I am going to focus on using all of the stuff as much as possible. So let's get into it! So very recently I bought this army painter wet palette and I've done a whole video on it. It was meant to be part of the haul but <laughs> I just did the video anyway. Check that out to see what this is like but basically it just keeps your paints wet. I had been talking about a store called Warhammer which is in Australia and I think it's a UK company. But Nick and I were kind of curious to just go in and check it out to see what other things they might have because it's all about miniatures and tabletop gaming. If ever there is a store where I understand nothing, it would be the Warhammer store. I just went in there just completely baffled by everything. But there was a very nice guy working and he was so kind to us. He explained quite a lot of it and he was not condescending in the slightest, which was fantastic. And he gave me this, which is a free sample miniature and this one you actually click together. Normally you'd have to glue the thing but he said that they give this out for free for people and a lot of people have actually handed them back once they've painted them. This is what it actually is. It's a vindicator and I think that looks really neat so I am so curious just to try out miniature painting and I'm definitely going to probably incorporate the army painter into that. He also gave us what is the model of the month and apparently you can go in there and click the pieces out and take them for free as well. So in here are a bunch of pieces that I have no idea how to put together. That's my receipt but it does not come with instructions so I took a photograph of the instructions and that's on my phone. This one will need to be glued together so we did end up getting some plastic glue. Nick also has a few other models that he's put together and some of the pieces keep falling off so he said that this would be really great to put that back together. So it's kind of for both of us it's just some glue to have in the house because we didn't have any. Apparently it takes a bit longer to set compared to super glue which will stick together instantaneously and I prefer something that's a little bit slower to stick together. I'm sure this will come in handy in the house. This is the brand Citadel which Warhammer carry. They do not have the army painter stuff that I could see and I also grabbed this free postcard because that is some cool artwork on there and that is definitely going into my art journal. I also picked up three paints just to paint my little miniature with. There were so many colours and I just spent forever trying to decide. So I've got a purple and what looks like a greenish teal colour as base coats. This is a layer coat. Apparently that goes on the top and is a little bit more transparent than the base coats but it just looked like a pretty yellow gold. So at some point I am going to put this thing together and see if I can paint it. I just thought I'd grab three colours to try it out. You could spend so much money in that shop and I probably won't be going in there very often but look at the pots. Aren't they cute? I figure I can drip a little bit out into this army painter and keep the paints wet for longer. So that was just a small adventure we had over one weekend just checking out the Warhammer shop and I still don't understand anything that goes on in there. <laughs> Next up is something I've been meaning to get for a while because I don't have one and it would be really great to have one in the studio and that is a glue gun. So I got this one, it's an Azito brand which is from the company Bunnings. It's a big hardware store in Australia. I thought I'd try and get a decent sized one. I've had a mini glue gun before and it was completely useless. It just wouldn't heat the glue up hot enough so the glue never fully stuck to anything and it was really frustrating. It's been a while and I decided to get a new one. I've got other Azito products and they've been really great. I have a heat gun which is excellent. As well as that I also have some glue sticks to go in there. Also from Bunnings and I'm really hoping I've got the correct size. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I looked at that <laughs> but I'm just going to open it and check it out because I haven't yet. I was also drawn to this because it actually has a nice solid case to keep it in. It's a full size glue gun. The um, small ones are about half of that size. This is a 30 watt one and quite a lot of them are only about 10 watts so I think this one should be a lot more powerful. 
I'm not going to try it out now because I am going to need time to practice how to use that. It even comes with a little stand and some extra nozzles. So it's a pretty good one looking at that. Yes, they are the same size glue. Okay, so I shall put that away to figure out at my leisure. Another glue type thing is this resin sealer. I think you just put it over the top of things to seal stuff on, especially for wood. I've found I've wanted to seal things with resin. I have some other kinds of resin, but I think this one is just more designed for the types of things I'm looking for. So that's just another tool for my studio. There is a shop in the city called Art Stretches, and they are owned by the company Art Spectrum. So they have a pretty good art shop in Melbourne itself. And we went in just to see what goodies they might have. They had a few things on sale as well. One of them was this really cute little watercolour set and it's by the company Jazz Art which is also Australian. They had a whole bunch of different boxes with all sorts of colours. There were pastels and I think landscape. There was a whole bunch and I just decided to get one. <laughs> Amazingly enough I picked the Australian landscape because I thought this could be a fun video to make so I will be filming this at some point. I'm not going to open it now. I'm going to leave this one as a teaser, but you can see a preview of the colors. This looked like the most useful set out of all of them, so I'll be checking out these sometime soon. Another thing I found at Art Stretches, which I have been thinking about for a while, I've wanted to do some lino printing or block cutting, like the carving. So I found this. It's a Derivan, another Australian company, block ink lino printing starter kit, and it has the black ink, one of these little brayer roller things, all of the tools on one handle, a palette knife thing, and I think a couple of linos just to start out with. So here it is in the back, and I thought this would be a really fun way just to do some practice carving. I also grabbed another couple of pieces, one of these blue linos, and also I've heard good things about the Easy Carve printing blocks. They're not exactly cheap, so I just got a small one, and I thought I would have a bit of fun maybe carving out some designs and creating some block prints. So there's another video which I will be doing at some point in the future. One other thing at Art Stretches that I've been really wanting to try for a long time is sculpting with some modeling clay. So I picked up some air dry clay and I am showing you a very sneak preview. I was sent by the company Graby a set of clay sculpting tools. So there's a little sneak peek. I'm going to unwrap this in a future video very soon because I actually do need to film this and I haven't done it yet and I need to figure out how to use these clay tools with this clay. Not a clue but I just thought this would be something really fun to try and I have some ideas of what I want to do with this. I just got one packet for now. I don't want to end up with so much clay that it all ends up drying because I don't use it quickly enough. I can always go out and get some more. This stuff's pretty easy to find. Speaking of resin, I do have some molds already, but I just picked up another couple that I saw in Spotlight. One's a Monstera leaf, which is what I tried to draw on my chair recently, and it was a total disaster. So I thought I would make one out of resin, maybe, and just a plain round coaster mold, because I thought maybe I can do something fun with that. So another couple of molds to add to my collection. I also really need to do the resin pouring. I had a couple of vouchers that I wanted to use. One of them was a voucher given to me by Kiki K, because if you saw the video at the beginning of the year, I did an opening of their advent calendar, and my one was a dud. It had three missing pieces but because it was on sale I couldn't exactly return it and because I destroyed the box anyway it had gone I'd lost the receipt as well so I couldn't take it back for a refund at all but they were very kind because I sent them a little feedback and they sent me a voucher so I went there and I just picked up this rather lovely little notebook set it's one of those ones that you can hold various notebooks in I don't think it's leather, I think it's leather et, but it feels so soft and I just took a fancy to it so that's what I got with the voucher. If anything I might give it as a gift to someone but at least that's intact. <laughs> and I also had a Spotlight voucher. Spotlight is I think like Michael's in America. It was 40% off one full price item. So I had a bit of a browse around and I saw this. I have never seen this watercolor paper before. I think it may well be only in Spotlight, but it says it's made in Malaysia and it is 300 GSM watercolor paper. So it's not cotton by any means. It says it's European watercolor paper. No, <laughs> no. I don't know what that means. It's 
50 sheets and it's pretty solid. So you can see it's a slightly creamy color. It's a cold press texture and you can see that it's also perforated. So I just thought this would be fun to do watercolor sketches in and it's nice to be able to pull them out, which I can't do out of my sketchbook. This next thing is not an art supply, but I couldn't resist it. It was in an op shop not far from one of the art shops that we went to visit and I just had to add it to my collection. It is so adorable. Look at it. <laughs> It's a metal phone. It's just an ornament. It's not actually a working rotary phone, but because I do collect other rotary phones to decorate, I just thought that was fabulous and I've never seen anything like that before. So this had to come home with me. The other art store I went to was Senior Art Supplies, which has a few stores around Melbourne. This one is the original one in the suburb of Malvern. And one of the people who used to work at the art shop, which is near me, actually changed jobs and is now working at Senior Art Supplies. So we went in to visit her and have a chat. And of course I couldn't leave the store without buying something. <laughs> so I picked up this wonderful skinny book. It's a handbook journal company. I've been looking at these for ages. Normally they have a red label with 200 GSM paper. This is 300 GSM paper. I don't know if it is cotton or not. This would be really fun to do long skinny landscapes in. So I'm not going to open this just yet. I bought this because I'd never seen it before and it's going to wait until I have finished some of my other sketchbooks because you probably know I already have quite a few on the go at the moment. So that's going in my sketchbook queue. <laughs> but I thought this one would be really fun to use in the future. They had a bit of a discount on brushes so I got a few of those. Oh yeah, that's right. I also saw these. There's four of them. These are big chunky pencils by Faber-Castell. These are the 9000 jumbo versions. So I don't actually own the 9000 regular version, but these are so neat. So I ended up getting the four that they had available, which is an HB, a 2B, a 4B, and an 8B. But look at those points on them. I don't even know if I have a sharpener that will fit these pencils, but they're so cool and they feel so smooth and they're just so lovely. So I just had to add those into my collection and I think I'll do a drawing with these very soon. I also just picked up a few small brushes. Most of them I think are Taclon because the animal hair ones are hideously expensive and I always feel a bit guilty using animal hair brushes these days. They are all by the company Neef that is also Australian. I've got three of the masters points. A one, a three slash zero which is really tiny and a three. And then I just grabbed a couple of random ones. One's a little angle brush and the other is a glazing brush that I'll just use for something. <laughs> what I'm really curious about is whether or not these will fit into this army painter box. So I'm going to just have a quick look because as you may have seen, this does actually have some spaces for paint brushes. I haven't used these ones either. These three are new that I picked up from the art shop because I want some brushes to do some acrylic painting with and I wanted short handle ones because I've tried painting with long handle brushes and it always hits the camera bracket when I'm filming so it's really frustrating. I thought some smaller handle brushes would be much better for that. And that's just a random brush I have. But let's just have a quick look and see if these ones fit. These are going to fit perfectly. <laughs> that is tiny. I thought this would be good to paint that model as well, which is the other reason I thought I would get some small ones. These three as well. I like that. I also have a fourth brush in this family, but it is too long, I think, to fit in here. Just a little bit too much. So this one has to stay separately in my other brush drawer. But I'm really happy I've got a little selection of mini brushes to put in this painter. That's always going to be handy. This just turned up at the doorstep, dropped off by Amazon. It is the latest sticker anthology book. They've just released it. It's by DK and it's the third in a series of I don't know how many they're planning to do, but I have been collecting them because I just think they are really beautiful and they look wonderful on my bookshelf. Plus, I would actually like to use the stickers in them at some point. So the first one that came out 
is the Botanist Sticker Anthology, followed by the Bees, Birds and Butterflies Sticker Anthology, and now we have the Seashore Sticker Anthology. They're just incredibly beautiful books, if I just lay them like that. I love that they're hardback and they look wonderful on the shelf. They are so beautifully bound, and I've noticed lately there seems to be more and more of these types of books being released. I also have the Antiquarian Sticker Book and the one that followed up the Bibliophilia one. So I've got five of these now, and there doesn't seem to be any sign of companies stopping making these, so I'm hoping this is going to be it for a while. I will have to draw the line eventually when it comes to a bookshelf space too. I'm thinking of doing a flip through of all three books together. Let me know if you're even interested in seeing the stickers in here. It could just be something that I'm personally obsessed with and no one else cares about it. But going into the new Seashore sticker anthology, I'll just open up a couple of pages. This paper is quite shiny and glossy. I like the pictures, they're mostly realistic and there's also some which are a little bit more of the Victorian style. I think there's quite a lot of interesting stickers in here and I just really enjoy flipping through these, it's so relaxing. But anyway, that's just my own personal little obsession, I just love these books and hey you gotta collect something right? <laughs> and the final thing I have today, which I like to consider as an investment, if you saw recently. I did a video on this set of Holbein Artist Gouache. This is the Iridori collection and I have the summer box here. I was very tempted by the other ones but I wasn't too sure if I wanted to get the other sets or if I was going to order the super granulation sets that I don't have from Schmincke. I made my decision based on a number of things but here's the result of that. We have autumn, winter and spring. So I decided that I was going to get the four boxes of the Erodori gouache. That is because my local art shop actually had these in stock. There was one winter left and when I went there I just decided to pick them all up because once they're out of stock it sometimes takes forever for them to come back into stock. I think I'm just going to have to wait on the super granulation sets. They're really expensive. They have to come from the UK and I just don't want to be dealing with shipping right now. For now I just really wanted these, they really appeal to me and the tubes of them are just so beautiful. There we go, don't they look stunning? <laughs> I just love the tubes that they're in. I haven't looked at any of these colours yet, I bought the boxes, I've had a bit of a look at some of the tubes but I really don't know what the colours look like, I'm hoping they're good and I'm going to do a series of videos, probably going to look at one box per video. Please let me know which one should I do first of these three, we have autumn, winter and spring and then maybe I might even do another video just showcasing all four of them and swatching all of the colours. So those are plans for the future, quite a few videos to be made there so that seemed to be quite a good idea. So I will arrange everything artfully on my desk. And one last thing which I'm adding in after I've edited this whole video, but I just saw a video by Lindsay the Frugal Crafter, last night it was, and she was using a couple of products which just looked really great and I did not know they came in colours, I thought they were only in graphite and charcoal colours, but they are these two sets, we have the Derwent XL Graphites and the Derwent XL Charcoals. And when I looked at them online, they were pretty expensive, especially on Amazon and there was another art shop around Melbourne which had them at a slightly cheaper price. But then I went and checked on the art shop's website, which is the one that's local to me, and they were even cheaper again, so I went down there to check them out. My Derwent Graphite set here is perfectly wrapped. And look, it's got these colours, I did not know it had these. I also did not realise that they're water soluble, so that was another reason. And hi Lindsay, if you happen to see this, she has actually watched videos on my channel. Lindsay has at least half a million subscribers, and the fact that she's actually watched some of my videos just blows my mind every time. So I really appreciate that Lindsay, it's a huge deal for me, and I'm so happy that we are able to chat on each other's videos. The other one I have here is not wrapped in plastic, as we can see. It's a little more dinged. Now, the reason for this is I was talking to the owner of the art shop. They received a shipment of these. Every single one of them had at least one 
broken charcoal and there's nothing they can do about it so unfortunately if you go there all of the sets they have will have one or two of these that are broken in half completely they were so kind i asked nicely if i could combine a couple of sets to get a fully intact one and they said yes so thank you so much to the art shop for that all of these ones were okay it was the black that was snapped so i'm very grateful to have a whole set of intact charcoals already my fingers are covered in it these are also water soluble and i'm very excited to try these out in a video soon so here we have it as much as i can fit on the desk i hope you enjoyed this video please give it a thumbs up if you did because it really helps out the channel and don't forget to click that subscribe button to see me use all of these supplies so I feel like there is a bit of a growing antagonism towards art supply halls. Just lately there's a lot of criticism out there and that's another reason why I'm having second thoughts about doing them. But I really love doing art supply halls. This is what I do every single day is art. And my YouTube channel has become pretty much a full-time job. So yes, I do have far more supplies than any one artist needs, but I am doing this as a living. It's what I do. I like to review products and I also like to try different things because it keeps me interested. And I just enjoy creating things and coming up with new ideas and trying out new things that I have never done before. For me, it's just something that I'm very passionate about. I collect art supplies because I enjoy it and it makes me happy. I can see my reflection in them and they're annoying me so I'll just put them over there. <laughs> so let me know what you think about art halls. Do you like them or are you totally over them as well? Doing art hall videos kept me sane during the two years of the pandemic where Melbourne has been locked down for a vast majority of it. But now we've opened up again, I feel like I can move on and maybe pursue some other interests. And I also have a humongous backlog of stuff to get through. <laughs> I have more videos than I can ever possibly film, so I'm never going to run out of ideas. This is not to say I'm not going to buy more things, because I probably will. I see things that catch my eye and I take a fancy to it, but it's going to be a while, I think, before I do another official art haul. Maybe nearer the end of the year or around my birthday, something like that in October. We'll see how we go. But that's all I've got to say on that. I would love to hear your opinions on art supply hauls. I hope you're all having a spectacular day out there, and I will see you all again really soon in my next video. Swatch you later. Bye!